now there's time to relax the job is done or is it hold on to that cigarette brother sometimes those planes don't all come back sometimes a plane its control shot away by enemy fire will make a forced landing in a ditch one more job coming right up for the air service command that plane is needed badly but it's immovable lifeless there's no crane big enough to pull it out but they've something just as good they've got an idea they're going to dig they're going to use pick and shovel and make that ditch bigger than ever why they want to make room for a three-ton truck so you can haul a wounded fortress out with a three-ton truck well, not exactly that truck is just a platform they drive it clear down under the lifted wheels of that heavy plane and hold it there. The wheels of the plane are going to clear the ditch. The bruised belly of the plane is raised up. Now the tractor can get to work, pulling the plane out onto level ground. The plane can move. It's alive. It can roll again. Perhaps it will fly. Parts are whipped back to the center for repair by the fastest route, by amphibious jeep. They want that plane to fly a mission inside of 48 hours. Can it be done? Maybe not. The jeep heads downstream through the heavy undergrowth that screens the center from the eyes of enemy airmen. It takes a shortcut as it hits the road to the center. Now the heavy repair specialists at the Air Service Center can really get to work. They bring the damaged sections into their shops. Here, they've got the tools, the spare parts. They've got power from their portable generators. The men in the parachute shop check the harness of all the chutes, hang the silk to dry in a special tower. The experts in the prop shop take apart the hub of one of those four propellers and replace the damaged bearings with new ones. The electrical boys find that the generator, which seemed all right, is really quite a problem. In fact, it's one for the sergeant. The ordnance boys are taking no chances on the guns. They're checked and double-checked to be sure they'll fire. The sergeant is testing the points on the generator with a continuity meter. Now it goes to the corporal for more work. The engine experts are repairing a small gear bent in the crash. The welder goes to work repairing a crack in a heavy part. And now the final step. The instruments on the plane have already been tested with portable equipment, which reproduces the conditions of flight. Air speed, artificial horizon, compass, bank and turn indicator. And the instruments, which seem defective, are taken back to this air-conditioned trailer shop. The altimeter can't go back to the factory. It must be repaired right here. It's put into the vacuum chamber. The altitude goes up and up. The wounded ship is healed. It takes to the air again. It's ready to fight. And even planes, which can never fly again, can still be useful. Because sometimes supplies from America don't get through. Yes, this ship, loaded down with supplies, was hunted by enemy bombers and hit and left burning. That smoke means parachutes and wing flaps and a hundred other items. And so an order goes out from the Air Service Command. Those missing supplies must be made up by every possible means. A team of salvage experts gets into a barge with full field equipment. They're going on a voyage. They're going a hundred miles away to a tiny island on which two fighter planes cracked up last week. Is the island friendly? They don't know. They can't be sure. They're ready for fighting as well as salvage. The launch takes them to a small steamer. It's a bright, calm afternoon, no hint of danger. Hard to believe the enemy is there, just beyond the horizon. Here come the men who know all about wings, all about metal, all about hydraulics. What should be saved from a broken landing gear or a burned fuselage? or a tail assembly chewed up by flak. The adventure is about to begin. The ship sets out in a calm sea. Fresh meat is carried on the hook. Everything is quiet, but everyone knows that these waters are infested with Jap subs and with sharks. There's the island, but it too is deadly quiet. If there are Japs around, they aren't visible. An officer goes out first to investigate. From the boat, they watch the launch move slowly toward the island. Who lives here, friend or enemy? Well, there's one way to find out. No, no 
Japs here now, but they still may come from overhead. The planes lie smashed in an open field. It's true they'll never fly again, but the metal of their wings or fuselage will patch the battle holes in a score of fighters. Mounted in another plane, this gun can still spit flame and death at the Jap. This gun will fight again. These props can be straightened and repaired. These bullets can still explode. These two planes, broken though they are, contain tubes and ribs and wiring and parts of instruments that have only just begun to travel in this war. These planes have another nine lives coming up and plenty of chances at the enemy. They'll go back to the air service center. Skillful hands will take them apart, repair them, use their parts for other planes. Yes, they'll fly and fight again.